Good evening, dear students. I am Dr. Dinesh Kumar, Dean Academics, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Jammu, and I am going to have a, give a very brief talk on epidemiological anthropology. So the plan of presentation is to define what is epidemiology, how is linked to anthropology, and uh, what are the essential core elements of epidemiology. So let me first of all define what epidemiology is. You know, epidemiology is made up of three words. Epi, which is upon, demos, which is people, logi, which is study. So it's a study of people. And you know, anthropology is also study of people and looks at various aspects of the origin of human as a species from a unicellular organism to what we are today. Now, epidemiology is as defined by John M. Lost in the International Epidemiology Association. It's a study of distribution and determinants of disease or health related events and its principles in prevention of diseases. So we'll take up one by one what it actually means. I said it's a study, so it means it's a scientific study of the distribution. And when I talk about distribution, then I'm talking about to whom it happens, how it happens, where it happens, why it happens, and how it happens. So five Ys, five Ws are the basic principles of how, how we learn about epidemiology. I, I'll explain it further in uh, next after, after uh, some time. And to say that it is only study of uh, the distribution would be incomplete because we have to study the determinants. How and why are the determinants? Whereas the other, what, when, and where are the distribution components of epidemiology. So epidemiology is not talking about diseases. It's talking about health-related events. For example, marriage, divorce, any social phenomena could be an event. And if you talk about what, when, where, why, and how, it becomes epidemiology. The three first three things which talks about to whom it happens, where it happens, when it happens, becomes the descriptive epidemiology. Whereas why and how becomes a part of what we call as the analytical epidemiology. So when I talk about distribution, I'm going to talk about the frequency of a disease or a health related event, the pattern of disease or a health related event, the time when it happens, the place where it happens, the persons who are afflicted or who show that kind of a behavior, things like this make up epidemiology. And let me tell you, epidemiology is not about a single person. Epidemiology essentially is a comparison. So whenever we, are, we study two or more people and we make inherent comparison between them, then it is epidemiology. So epidemiology is not about single individual. It is about populations. And anthropology is also about population. So you could now look at. So when we are talking about the origin, the evolution, the genetic makeup of the population, how it has grown from unicellular to a multicellular organism and with various advancement in the cognitive thinking or their growth and development, all are features of essential epidemiology. So we did talk about the one component of epidemiology that was distribution of disease or health related events. Now we are going to talk about what are the determinants of disease. Now when we talk about determinants of disease, there is no single determinant. And the knowledge of determinants has grown over the years. When we did not have much knowledge about the what causes disease, we were thinking of disease coming from supernatural causes. Then we, when we got an idea of that there are germs, then we begin with what is called as the germ theory disease. And so forth and so on. 
what we now understand is that the occurrence of disease is a, as a phenomena happened because there are multifarious causes which are playing a part. And similarly, over a period of time, the description of how a disease happens, the models have been different. The model actually starts, there are many models and I'm just going to uh, maybe introduce you to a couple of models. One of them is uh, the model which talks about uh, along a continuum. On one side, you have a purely genetic disorders like fetal ketone urea. And on the other spectrum, you have disease where the genetic, genetic component is minimal where then and the environmental component is overriding. And along this continuum are diseases where a different proportion of genetics and in one, the environment play a part in the production of diseases. So in the middle, you could say there is an equal proportion of genetics and an equal proportion of environment playing a part. Now, when I'm using the term environment, environment is not single environment. It is a social environment. It is physical environment. It's chemical environment. So we doctors, when we work, describing diseases, why them, why these happens, but focused only on one particular aspect that was a biomedical environment. The germs and the diseases produced by it. But with more and more knowledge, we understood that the social environment also plays a bigger role. The physical environment also plays a bigger role. As a matter of fact, it was realized from uh, the father of medicine, Aristocrates, who talked about air in, in his studies, which is called as airs, waters, and places, where he under, my, underlined the importance of the climate, the water we uh, drink, the food we eat, the climate we live in, the seasons of the year, all have impact upon the health and the disease. And then, of course, there came another model which is called as a cogwheel model. And in this cogwheel model, model, it is shown that the social, physical and the chemical environment, depending upon what kind of context we are talking, play an equal role. Somewhere physical environment is playing a bigger role, somewhere chemical environment is playing a bigger role. I'll give you an example of, you must have heard about uh, 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 Minamata Bay disease. Minamata Bay is a place where uh, people used to consume a lot of fishes. Now, there were industrial effluents which were being thrown into the, in the sea without being treated. Now, these fishes, yet they tend to accumulate, they are bioaccumulators, they tend to accumulate mercury in them. And when they had mercury in them and people who consume mercury over a long period of time, developed a particular kind of disease which is called as Minamata Bay disease. Look at how much important the physical environment plays a role in the, conduct, in the production of a disease. Another example which I can, could give you is something which is a behavioral event. We used to call dancing manias of Egypt where people would show a particular kind of behavior which did not have organic basis but this behavior could actually spread in hundreds and thousands of people and they show, they could show a particular kind of uh, 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 a behavior or a disease or a health related event which, which could have far reaching implications on the health of the population. So you could see somewhere there is a behavior which is not something which, which aligns with the, uh, with the uh, you could say germ theory of disease. And slowly and slowly we started building up. We said that there is a model where with in, in its core is a genetic core. And this genetic core makes somebody susceptible to the development of a particular disease depending upon whether it is mediated by chemical environment or it is mediated by physical environment or it is mediated by the social environment.
And lastly, I just want to make, make a brief mention of uh, what we call as a web of causation. And this is true in terms of when we try to define the occurrence of diseases which have multitude of causes, like non-communicable diseases, cancer, and uh, uh, lifestyle diseases. Now you have multiple pathways, you have multiple factors, and they are like a spider of a web. And they are uh, dependent upon each other. Somewhere they have an additive effect, the two factors joining together and making, uh, acting like a force multiplier to produce a disease. Some factors sometimes facilitate the production of a disease by indirect method or direct method. And you could understand that the prevention and control of diseases, which are of multifactorial nature, becomes a very, very difficult task as compared to when we are talking about germ theory of disease, when we could actually isolate the potential agent, treat it with medicines or with vaccination. So now, in this era, more and more uh, knowledge is being gained about the occurrence of cancers and CDs, and we have to think of multiple ways how to protect and promote the health of the populations. So, uh, my dear students, I, I hope you have, uh, I have been able to uh, put a connection between what is epidemiology and anthropology and tried giving you some idea about both the things and how they are linked. And uh, I would be very happy to answer any queries you put forward with more suitable examples with respect to anthropology and epidemiology. And if you have uh, liked the lecture, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.